Hi, this is going to be my second kit I'm building from Banggood. It was planned to be my first because it's for component tester or transistor tester. This is called SKU263599 and the case is SKU273392. And I have a link down below to the production page. And if you check that, there's two manuals or to install instructions. There's one for the components and other stuff and one for the case. And you have to check in the instruction for the case because there's some things you're not supposed to mount on this one to get to work. So I'm gonna do unpacking first and see what's in these cases or boxes and then get to a bit of work. So here are most of the parts uh, or all the parts. This is the things for the case and the front sticker, the LCD display, PCB and other things for the component test itself. So I'm gonna get the box back and as always start with the low building components and I know I'm not gonna mount some things like this testing socket which not be used because I have a case. So remove the things I'm not going to mount in the beginning like the screen and just the screws I'm going to save for later. The resistors are in place. As you can see, I double checked all the resistors with a multimeter. Always do that. You don't want to put something together and there's a faulty component which throws you off when you start it up. It doesn't work. So. Now I'm going to just keep on working, put on the components and there's a bunch of transistors that look the same, but read the marking on. I've been seeing about two or three different versions of transistors and other stuff here. So read that you get the correct component in the correct place and the correct direction. Watch out when you're mounting the ceramic capacitors, these yellow ones especially, because they are all 1 or 4 except 1, that's 1 or 3, so don't get too eager when mounting them. And the electrolytic capacitors, there's a marking, there says arrows and a minus, and if you check on the PCB, there's marked plus, and on the other side, there's marking lots of small stripes, so you want the minus not pointing at the plus sign of course so that side and then the minus pointing at the stripe side and the same come to the crystal for the processor the at mega processor and this is a metal casing with the two legs sticking out and I don't know it's going to be a problem, but the soldering pads are quite big down here. And if I take the crystal, push it all the way down, it might short, short circuit itself through the case or the soldering pad. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lift it up a bit. I haven't taken some leftovers here and I've done two U-shapes, which I'm going to place like this. I'm going to take them away when I'm done the soldering. Push the crystal through, down, bend the legs a bit, and let's see, we can do some nice soldering. Just flip it over. I'm gonna tack it one side, get the heat on. I've done that, I put my finger on the crystal reheat the solder and push it down. Now the other one. That's one. And the second one. And I have a battery. Not a brand new one, but anyway, so not the wrong way one. Ah, oh, let's see. 
and now it's pin 7 and 22 on the at mega so let's see one two three four five six seven and the other one is straight over see we have right orientation and I do the wrong counting DC come on oh sorry you have to do that when you have to push the button and this is five four point ninety six yeah good at least the button zero voltage so the five voltage controller is working so now we can start put the rest together So I prefer the case now and put on this uh, front and it's a sticky backside, I want to call it tape. But when you remove it, don't remove all of it because there's one part over this window and you don't want this part to be sticky because dust and all, everything else is going to get stuck there. So you can leave that on and I'll put down the, those these little test points, one, one, two and three, three and I have taken the Two on this side, there, two on this side, there, and one in the middle, and then put on some extensions so I can get it to the circuit board. So now I'm going to finish up the circuit board, put in the at mega, put on the screen and secure it, and when we can start to put things together, first of all, I'm going to remove these again. So I put it together. There's a nut left over and some small stuff. I didn't read the instructions normally, but there's three leads here, which are your little connection out to the outer world here from, and I just put another way, but it makes the same work. So now we're going to do the calibration. And if I still is correct, we need to short circuit things. First of all, I fixed a short circuit now over here. So let's see, push the button. Battery is a self test mode. You have to push the button in, see what it says here. Now uh, self-testing. Isolate probes. Easy with this. And now it wants the capacitor. Which one was? Uh, let's see if we get it really nicely done. Oh, come on. That's not good. I don't want to do it like that. Let's do it like. Testing two hundred and twelve. Eh. The final test with a transistor tester. So of course we're gonna start with the transistor. It's a five or seven nothing strange let's see if we can get it down one two three push the button and wait for my information hopefully oh but sometimes i get a bad connection so i have to push the components a bit so that it really get good connection yeah mpn transistor nothing strange that's too good and i also tried it with leds there are diodes and it's Doing some nice flashing, and then we get the 2.95 volts for the volt. That's, that's, thing, that's correct. That's a free, should be around three volts. And you can check capacitors. Just remember to discharge them before you put them close to the connection, or you're gonna fry the circuit. And it says, let's see, 466 microfarad. It's just 470 microfarad capacitor. Nice. And we have bigger components. I'm just taking them all home to check them out. And let's see, I'm gonna finger on so I get good connection. And channel MOSFET. That's okay, and the parasitic diode and everything. You can throw that away, and we're gonna take one of these with good legs. Let's see. This is not a MOSFET, this is a works yeah 
a double diode in one package. That was nice. And when we take the third component, I'm not gonna read up all the numbers of them because it's just boring. Now it's gonna show up as a double diode too. No, it's not a double diode. Let's do a second test. Maybe can recognize these. Now it shows up like one diode. So you think something's wrong with these, uh, but they're not. They are IGBTs, uh, insulated gate bipolar transistors. And why I'm testing these is because there are uh, a menu. We're gonna turn it around. If you go to show data, you get some information inside. Then you get the images. We have the MPN transistors, PMP, nothing strange, JFET, IGBTs. That's the component we're trying to test. So apparently there are the image in the database inside the tester, but apparently the software cannot recognize uh, those other components, tracks. You can go over the diodes and all the letters and everything. So what I found out, it can recognize MOSFET, some different types, transistors, capacitors, diodes and LEDs. Uh, real resistors if you want to check them but works but apparently there are some components it doesn't recognize it do not just think that they are broken because they do not show up I think all of these are correct but I have to check them later I will not use these this is just salvage from an old frequency converter so that's that I must say it's quite nice these Connections pin for testing isn't the best, but it works. So small thing just to check that your components components are okay when you're using them Have a good time